By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a special episode because I guess Christmas came early because I got this in the mail. And uh, it's actually post from Sweden. So let's have a look. Let's see what's inside here. As you can see, I've already opened it to check it. Um, and what do we have here? Look at this. And this is actually a booster pack from a new set or project uh, that's called Scryings. Let me get the scissors here. It's really cool because a few old school websites and channels have been selected to participate in the spoiler season of scrying. So this is a booster pack of scryings here. Let me get the plastic out. Look at how nicely it's made. Look at that. So this is a booster pack. And um, before I'm actually going to open it, look at that at first edition. Very well made in the darkest libraries of, oop, let's put it right in there, in the darkest libraries of Teleria, a twisted mage quest, the Palantir for stories of Dominion magic. The visions create rifts in time and space, revealing empires of the past and future planes long forgotten. And, and the Dominion Ice Age alongside the hush landscapes of Jamuria, a millennia later. A wanderlust to this reality can only be quenched by scryings. So it has its own story as well. And before I'm going to open this, I'm going to discuss what scryings actually is, just in case you're like, okay, it's a booster and I see the name scryings, but what is it? So let's dive into that first. So here we are on the website of oldschool.mtg. Dot blogpost.com and as you can see this is actually the post where scryings was announced and that was in november the 6th of 2019. now scryings is designed by mj so magnus and magnus is also the founder of swedish old school magic and that's actually what makes this so special like if it was just you know anybody saying hey man i've got a new uh, rule set to play with the old sets. It wouldn't be that interesting. At least that's my opinion because there are already so many ways of playing old school magic. But the fact that Magnus is the one behind Scryings, that's what makes it special. So what we see here is that the release date will be December the 28th. The set size has 160 cards, 40 commons, 35 uncommons and 41 rares. So there's actually a lot of rares almost. Well, actually, most of the cards are rares. There are more rares than uncommons. There are more rares than commons in this expansion, making it, you know, different than a usual expansion set. And here we see uh, what cards Magnus is um, selecting from. So the card pools, it's Fallen Empire, Ice Age, Homelands, Alliances, Mirage, uh, Mirage Visions, and Weatherlight. Um, and the interesting thing is 116 cards that's uh, the same size as Chronicles. So it's kind of a little wink to chronicles 2 and also here they mention it's like an old school future site set so basically how you need to look at this is it's an expansion for when you play old school swedish magic so you're at a tournament you're playing old school swedish magic that's not go going to change it's exactly it, it remains the same but you now have an extra option you can say hey we're going to play it with scryings or you can say hey we're going to do a side event where we are going to play with scryings so it's not like this is going to replace Swedish old school magic. It's another way of playing old school magic. So you can say we're going to play Swedish with scrying. So we're going to add the scrying's card pool. And that's a set size of 116 cards. So um, as you could see in the little intro, uh, they sent me a booster pack. So of course, I'm going to open it in this video. But maybe it's also useful to first take a look at what cards are already spoiled because we're so close to the actual re release date of the 28th so a lot of cards have already been spoiled so now i'm going to another site where or actually the same block but to another post where all the um, uh, cards that have been spoiled so far are uh, selected so we can see storm crow is in there <laughs> that's a nice one overpowered storm crow um, but i'm just going to scroll down here because we're going to see see the visuals so a visual spoiler 
um, and I believe that this website is up to date. And let's have a look. So here we can see them. So we see our giving find, we see enduring renewal, we see free wind falcon, and we see a lot of other cards here. Order of Lightbird, for instance, maybe bringing back uh, White Weenie here a little bit in Swedish. This one's a very interesting one, Sacred Mesa. And then we are already in blue. We see Deep Spawn. That could be uh, interesting. Also here, High Tide. And a lot of interesting cards here. And, you know, I'm getting, even just scrolling through these cards, I'm getting a lot of ideas of, wow, that will be cool in this deck. Like Memory Lapse, that's a crazy good card. I remember when it came out in Homelands, I didn't like it. I was like, why wouldn't you just play a normal counter spell? Why would you play Memory Lapse? And, yeah, it took me a while to understand why Memory Lapse is such a good card. Uh, well, Political Trickery, I can't really remember that card. Choose Target Land. You control and target lands and opponent controls, exchange, exchange control of those lands. Wow. So you can actually steal Aloha. Wait a minute. With this card, you can have two Library of Alexandria's in play. That, <laughs> that's super cool. I got to play that card. Okay, let's take uh, let's, some more look. Oh, yeah, this one. I love I love Sages. Sage of Labnam is one of my favorite cards in old school. And this card also I really enjoy. Okay, you got to sacrifice two lands, but you get to draw three cards. And imagine in certain decks where you get land flooded, like in mid game or late game, you don't mind, you just want to have the card. So you can basically have an ancestral recall on a stick here. The famous Stormcrow, Zurus Weirding, oh, this card. Okay, I'm not gonna read it because I still don't understand it, but I remember when this came out, I was like, what is this? That was a feeling I had constantly with Ice Age, by the way. What is this? And is this card really good or is this card really bad? And up to this day, with a lot of Ice Age cards, I still don't know. Uh, Ash and Ghoul, Buried Alive, wow, so we, we're seeing we're seeing some cards with Graveyard Synergy here. So maybe Reanimator is a thing. Dark Banishing, this can be a very powerful one, because one of the big problems with, with when you're playing Mono Black, and I'm sure the Mono Black players have experienced this, is getting rid of artifact creatures. Well, with Dark Banishing, you can get rid of those artifact creatures. Very cool, Darylor, a great card to splash for one black and three, because if you don't play with any other black spells, then the drawback doesn't really matter for your deck. Desolation, Funeral Charm, this is also very powerful, like cards that let you choose between different options, extremely powerful in old school magic. I think that's one of the reasons why Disenchant is one of the strongest cards in the format, because you can choose artifacts or enchantments. Very interesting, Ice and Shade, very epic card. Uh, again, a card draw, but then in black, very nice. I'm sure people are going to do weird stuff with this one. And and the interesting thing here is that one of the things, you know, is that in Swedish Magic, you cannot play with Fallen Empire. Um, but now if you say, I'm going to play Swedish with Scryings, you have access to some Fallen Empire cards. So that's very interesting. And we don't see him, I think. Oh, Pox. Very interesting card. Kind of a black balance, you could say, in a way. Interesting card again. Card that, uh, I think these cards always get my brewing mind going, like I want to do something with those cards. They kind of invite me to make new decks. Oh, Spirit of Night, yes. I'm seeing a lot of cards, by the way, that have like a double color to cast, or in this case, a triple black to cast, kind of hinting towards uh, building decks that are more uh, mono decks. So maybe more color battles when you add scryings to the card pool. Dwarven Miner, extremely powerful card. Destroy target, non-basic land. Ay, 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 that's extreme. I guess you can play four of these. I mean, that's gonna, that's gonna have an impact because there are a lot of non-basic lands. Goblin Grenade, that's one of the cards. I've always played a lot of goblin decks and one of the things that was difficult for me in Swedish is that your goblin deck doesn't really stand a chance. But now with this addition of Goblin Grenade, when you do a Scryings event, who knows? Goblin Tinkerer, really nice, and it's a two drop, because in, in, in Goblin Land, when you play Mono Red, there aren't a lot of two drop options, and this is really nice. And then you don't have to play Shatters anymore main. So this could be really nice, kind of the scavenger folk idea. 
Uh, yeah, because destroy target artifact. Target artifact doesn't amount of damage equal to its cast and cost to Goblin Tinkerer. So it's actually a great Mox Killer. And when you have a Goblin King out, you know, and you're actually pumping your Goblin Tinkerer, it can destroy some serious artifacts without killing itself, actually. Goblin Vandal. Yeah. Nice, again, a way to destroy some. Gorilla Tactics, I remember that one. Hammer of Bow Garden. Oh, legendary. Jokel Hops. Orcus Lumberjack. Look at this. So many cool cards. And of course, green with Autumn Willow. And Autumn Willow is going to be seriously strong in old school because it's the only card that has the hexproof ability. Well, not the only card, but it, 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 in the most flexible way. Autumn Willow. Wow, fantastic. I remember when that came out, people were really crazy about it like a 4-4 that you cannot remove it was deemed to be too strong in, in those days city of solitude amazing so this wow green is looking strong here let's go down a little bit more natural order Ooh, another gin so you already have urnum gin and then you can also play this one alongside your urnum Wow, and look, that natural order is extremely strong, I think. Primal order. During each player's upkeep, primal order deals one damage to that player for each non-basic land here she controls. Wow, there's a there are a lot of cards in here that punish you when you're playing with, with non-basic land. So I guess maybe part of the idea when Magnus was designing this was to kind of get the color wars back and to kind of do something against all the Mishra's factories, against all the Maces, against the Loas, against all the dual lands. You know, you see, if you look at, 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 at the facts and the recent results of old school magic tournaments that play according to the Swedish rules, you see a lot of um, control dominating, a lot of blue, white decks with, with splashes of black and splashes of green kind of dominating the scene. So if you make it more difficult for players to play with multiple colors, if you kind of punish that in a way, then um, yeah, this could be this this could work, you know. Then you get more diversity in the deck. So I kind of get that idea. Wow, a three three for one. That's all I'm seeing here right now. I know you got to bury in, bury a land, but still or a forest actually. But wow, a three three for one. Oh, I remember pulling this <laughs> from an Ice Age uh, pack. I thought it was great, like a a, a better version of Crawl Worm. Uh, let's have a look. Seed of Innocence. Wow, bury all artifacts. Each artifact's control against an amount of life equal to the artifact casting cost. Okay. Wow, so we're Shatterstorming Green here. And this is interesting. Tinderwall and also Undergrowth, one of the first cards to kind of hint towards a collaboration of different colors. So this is a, is, is a green, red thing working together. And this Tinderwall is actually quite a good card. It's, it's, it's a pretty good card and you can do some really cool stuff with it. And of course the mana ramping is great, but also the direct damage uh, or the damage to a creature is not too bad, can be useful. This is with Tinderwall is one of those cards you, you don't want to underestimate. It can be very, very useful. And let's have a look. We also got some, we got one golden card. So I wanted to say some golden cards. We got one golden card, Lord of Treasurehorn. This guy, <laughs> I remember this card, just insane. So four mana, you get a 10-4. And then what happens? When Lord of Tressorhorn comes into play, pay two life and sacrifice two creatures and target opponent draws two cards. Effects that prevent or redirect damage cannot be used to counter this loss of life. And then you've got one to regenerate. This card has got brewing all over it. So like you want to brew with this card. And at the same time, what we saw as well is that there are so many cards that, in scryings that I've seen so far, that punish you for playing multiple colors. I wonder if somebody can make the Lord of Treasurehorn work. Respect, seriously. But this is a card I definitely want to, want to brew with. That's fantastic. Let's have a look at the artifacts. Anvil of Bow Garden. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. During each player's draw phase, that player draws an additional card and then chooses and discards a card. Okay, so you're drawing a card, but you also have to instantly discard a card. Interesting. Uh, and a Chimeric Sphere. Oh man, these cards, so funny. Ah, Grinning Totem. 
Grinning Totem. Yeah, two tap and sacrifice Grinning Totem. Search target opponent's library for any card and put it face up in front of you. That player shuffles his or her library afterwards. You may play the card as though it were in your hand. If you do not play the card by the beginning of your next upkeep, put it into own, its owner's graveyard. Wow, this is a strong card. Imagine playing four of these. Amazing. Very strong, very good disruption spell. Jester Scab, of course we know it, but let's just uh, read it anyway. Two sec, Jester Scab to look through target player's library and remove any three of those cards from the game. Reshuffle the library afterwards. Again, very powerful. This is gonna punish combo players. Both of these cards, actually. Magma Mine. Oh, the Phyrexian Dreadnought. <laughs> These crazy cards. Oh, man. Remember, it says uh, into play, sacrifice any number of creatures with total power of 12 or more. So, what I'm thinking about is two Bull Lightnings. But I guess then you need seven mana to pull that off. But still, it's, it's pretty cool. The Fairy's Puzzle Box, great card, great card. That, that that card used to drive me crazy, you know, because I'm the kind of player, like many Magic players, you have your hand, you look at your hand, and you kind of base your, your turns on what you have in your hand and what you kind of could pull. And then these disruption cards, like the Fairy's Puzzle Box, they just, poof, your whole plan goes out of the window. Um, then we've got a Thran Tome. So we've got a new Tome. Okay, let's have a look. Four and five and tap. Reveal the top three cards of your library to target opponent. Bury one of those cards of an opponent choice and draw the remaining. So you get to draw two, but you lose one of the cards and your opponent gets to choose. Okay, okay. Could be interesting. Zurin Orb. Ooh, that feels kind of broken to be honest. Zurin Orb, this card is a card we're gonna see a lot. I think this card is way too powerful. So I'm curious to see, because I know Magnus a little and I know that he's really a thinker. He thinks things through so he, he just doesn't Put cards in scrying because they're funny. No, he really thinks about the balance. So I'm sure he has his reasons So I'm really curious to see how Zur and Orp will stand uh, Will will work in this whole thing now I've got killed or an outpost What I always think about these lands is combining them with land tax because you've got to bury a land sacrifice of planes in this case and that means that, you know, you, you don't get a land ahead and then you can activate your your land tax. So that's one of the bonuses when you combine that card with land tax. Very strong card, very strong. Undiscovered Paradise. Nice, so this is kind of a Lotus Fill, but completely different, where it goes back to your own hand. Very nice. Very cool to see this. Um, well, now that you kind of know what Scryings is, and now that I kind of know what Scryings is, and I've looked at the cards, let's jump back to the uh, actual opening of the booster pack, and uh, let's see what card I'm going to pull that is not yet on this block. I'm curious, because apparently my booster pack also has some uh, fresh spoilers for you. So let's go to the booster. And we are back. Here it is, our Scrying's back. So now that we know what cards are in the set, let's open it. I'm going to open it in a way that I can maybe repack it because there are not a lot of packs. Oh, it's nice. The glue is not too thick. Okay, this is good. I do not know the order. I'm really happy in the way I've opened it, by the way. So here we go. And again, like we saw in the spoiler, there are more rares in the set than commons. And I believe this is 15 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 cards. So let's take a look. There he goes. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. Full Duvian award. Wow, I didn't see that one yet. So the red Jusum. Oh man, I so want to play with that card. Boom. Browse. Browse again is a card you can do things with. I've seen, when I played Alice, a format where you play with only Ice Age and Alliances, I've seen people do six stuff with this card. So, Browse, it's two blue and two, and look at the top five cards of your library and put one of them into your hands. Remove the remaining four from the game. There we go. Number three. Wow, Pillage. Another way to steal lands to do something with those annoying non-basics. 
very target artifact or land. So this is just a better stone rain, basically, especially when you're playing mono red. Beautiful art by Richard King Ferguson, by the way. Really love that art. Number four. Boom. Oh, serrated arrows. I've seen this card doing sick stuff. You had that tournament uh, in the 90s where you had to play with Homelands. Help me out in the comments below. Uh, let's have a look at the card. So it's Forts and Artifact. And it says, when Serrated Arrows comes into play, put three Arrowhead counters on it. During your upkeep, bury Serrated Arrows if there are no Arrowhead counters on it. Tap, remove an Arrowhead counter from Serrated Arrows to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. That is what makes this card so good. It's a counter. It's not a minus one, minus one until end of turn or a one damage. Now it is a counter on a creature, so it's going to stay there. So four counters. And it's or actually three counters. I should check it out. Three counters. It doesn't come into play tap, so meaning you can play it and immediately activate it to put a minus one, minus one counter on a creature. I think this card is very powerful. It's kind of like a Triskelion in a way. Very powerful. Okay, card number five. And we've got Choking Sands, two black and one, sorcery from Mirage. Destroy target non-swamp land. If that land is a non-basic land, Choking Sands deals two damage to that land's controller. Wow, so put this next to Sinkhole, Evil Presence. Uh, you've got that other card from Legends that when you tap in and the land is sacked. Put all that together and you've got a really impressive mono black land destruction deck actually. Choking Sands. If it's non-basic, you get two damage as well. That's just brutal. Another very playable card. Bam, okay, Order of Light Burr. This one we saw, very good card from Fallen Empire. Two white, protects you from black, and for two white, plus one, plus zero until end of turn, and for two, one white, first strike. A card that's very popular in Eternal Central for a reason, making white weenie really, really strong and more playable. Um, so we've got card number seven. And there we have the Dusk Rider Falcon from the Weatherlight. It's one white and one, and it's a summon Falcon one one, and it's a flying with protection from black. Could be a useful sideboard card with that protection from black. Putting it here, um, card number eight. Ah, Benthic Explorers, and this is a card you see on the box art of alliances. It's a merfolk making interesting here for one blue and three. Tap, untap target, tap land and opponent controls to add one mana of any type that land produces to your mana pool. So it's kind of a way to mana ramp. Interesting, not really seeing how this card could be useful, but it is a merfolk. So that alone gives it some potential. And here we go, Gorilla Tactics. So that's another card we already saw. It's from Alliances for one red and one. Gorilla Tactic deals two damage to target creature or player. If a spell or effect controlled by an opponent causes you to discard Gorilla Tactics from your hand, reveal Gorilla Tactics to all players and it deals four damage to target creature or player. Okay, so let's have a look. So Gorilla Tactics, if they want to discard it. So this is a great weapon against uh, Mind Twist, I guess. And how many cards do we have? We've got, ooh, we still got six cards to go. That's nice. Bam, and we've got Undergrowth. Another card we saw. An instant from Alliances for one green. No creatures deal, deal damage in combat this turn, so kind of a fog. And if you pay a red and two, in addition to the casting cost, Undergrowth does not affect red creatures. Interesting. Boom, Tinderwall, the card I briefly discussed card that I think is very powerful. For one green, you get a zero three wall, so kind of like the wall of wood, but then it's much, much better. Because for zero, you can sacrifice tinder wall to add two red to your mana pool. And you can also pay red and sacrifice tinder wall to have it deal two damage to target creature it blocks. Now, I personally think that the first ability is going to be very, very useful. The second to get two red, to kind of ramp yourself and speed up your game, especially when you're already playing in green. Four cards to go, and Goblin Tinkerer. Very good card, I think. Very useful for those Goblin decks. One red and one from Mirage. Red and tap, destroy target artifact. That artifact deals an amount of damage equal to its casting cost to Goblin Tinkerer. 
So like I said, if you've got a lot of Goblin Kings going, it's going to be more, it's going to be stronger and it can start destroying Suchis and other big uh, cards, man. Think of Nevenor's Disc, for instance. I mean, this card could really be, be a problem for your opponent. Also, it's already, the way it is, just the way it is like this, it's already a great Mox killer. I wonder if Mox Monkey is going to be released as well in Scryings. Well, let's have a look, three cards to go, boom. Mind Step Thrall, two black and one from the Fallen Empire expansion. If Mind Step Thrall attacks and is not blocked, you may sacrifice it to force the player it attack to discard three cards. If you do so, it deals no uh, damage during combat. If the player does not have enough cards, his or her hand, hand is discarded. It's a nice way. It's a decent way to get some cards out of your opponent's hand. Bam! And we've got Song of Blood for one uh, red and one, and it's from Visions. Put the top four cards from your library into your graveyard. For each creature card put into the graveyard this way, all creatures that attack this turn get plus one, plus zero. Very interesting. I wish this card was an instant, personally. That would make it even cooler, but an interesting card nonetheless. And the last card of this spoiler. We already have Balduvian Hordes. I mean, it doesn't get much cooler than that, but let's have a look. Bam! Mana War. Very cool. So Mana War, another very useful card, already spoiled. Uh, one, blue, and two. And it's from Visions. And when Mana War comes into play, return target creature to its owner's hand. So there you have it. And I believe when I'm looking and I mean, I could be wrong, but I think I got a lot of spoiler cards actually. I think this this card is, is spoiled. I didn't see that before. So the Dusk Rider Falcon, I think Son of Blood, Choking Sands, Serrated Arrows, Pillage, Browse, I'm not quite sure. I think that was already in there. I'm not quite sure. I do like the card. Look at that art. That's <laughs> so cool. Oh yeah, I'm looking for something. Yeah, that's, don't mind. Just uh, let me do my thing. Really nice. And it's by, oh look at that, Phil Foglio. Could have known it. It kind of has this cartoony style. Very nice. Um, so I believe these are the cards that are spoiled in this booster pack. If I'm not mistaken, and I could definitely be mistaken, but I, I didn't see the Balduvian Horde yet. For me, that's really the pick. I remember when Alliances came out and people went crazy about this card. And obviously it took them a couple of weeks to discover that that discard um, mechanic, that discard condition makes the card really, really a lot worse than Juice and Gin, but still it's, it's such a cool card. So thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks and thank you Magnus for sending me this cool booster and letting me do a Scryings opening on my channel. Thank you very much for that. I'm very interested to hear your thoughts about Scryings. What do you think? Do you think it's a cool new addition to playing old school magic? Um, or do you have a different opinion? What cards are you still hoping to see in Scryings? And I'll post a link to the blocks that I showed, uh, to the blog posts that I showed in this movie, so I'll put that in the description below so you can visit those websites for yourself and take your time to go through all the scrying cards that have been spoiled so far. Um, for now, thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic, and see you next time. <laughs>